For my independent study, I researched the potential antidepressant effects of sleep deprivation chronotherapy in male and female sprog dolly rats. For some background, I'm going to talk a little bit about depressive disorders, specifically major depressive disorder. Depressive disorders are extremely widespread, affecting over 260 million people worldwide. Major depressive disorder is the most common type of depressive disorder, as well as the most severe. As demonstrated in this figure, there are significant sex differences in the reported prevalence of major depressive disorder. Women are reported to experience this depressive disorder at a higher rate than men, both in the span of 12 months and within their lifetime. The exact mechanisms behind depressive disorders are not fully understood. However, it is widely thought that the neurotransmitter systems involving serotonin, noradrenaline, and dopamine contribute to some extent. Keep these systems in mind as they will be important later on. Due to the widespread and severe nature of depressive disorders, the need for various effective treatments is great. Many pharmacological treatments have been developed, a vast portion of them targeting the neurotransmitter systems I mentioned previously, particularly the serotonergic system. Drugs that target the system would be Prozac and Lexapro, for example, which are quite common. Other common treatments include therapy, various life changes, and even more extreme methods like electroconvulsive therapy. However, 50 to 60% of major depressive patients are labeled as treatment resistant. This generally means that they are not responsive to commonly effective treatments. This is concerning considering that 60% of suicides are connected to improperly treated depression. Therefore, it is evident that a rapid antidepressant treatment that would be effective for those labeled as treatment resistant is necessary. A treatment of this nature could potentially decrease suicide rates and increase remission rates for those with major depressive disorder. In addition to the mood-related symptoms that define depressive disorders, sleep-related disruptions are also commonly seen in people with major depressive disorder. As shown in this figure, a large percentage of people with depression suffer from many kinds of sleep disruptions. The ones shown here are trouble falling asleep, waking too early, or hypersomnia. This is a toxic cycle as depression can impact sleep negatively, which can in turn increase depressive symptoms and so on. The biological clock system that regulates sleep-wake cycles involve many of the same systems that are thought to be involved in depressive disorders, including serotonergic systems, noradrenergic systems, and dopaminergic systems. The melatonergic system is also involved as melatonin helps regulate sleep-wake cycles. Because of the overlap between involved systems, sleep-related treatments have been developed to treat depression. These include bright light therapy, sleep phase advance, and sleep deprivation chronotherapy, which is what my study focused on. Using sleep deprivation to treat depression may seem counterintuitive considering what I've said about sleep disruptions worsening depression symptoms but it has been shown that 24 to 48 hours of sleep deprivation can have antidepressant effects. The sleep disturbances normally seen in those with depression are thought to further negatively impact the biological clock machinery and relevant neurotransmitter systems involved in depression. However, sleep deprivation chronotherapy is thought to reset these, potentially kickstarting more normality in these systems. This treatment is relatively inexpensive and easy to execute and has minimal side effects and can act rapidly. These rapid effects can be maintained by combining with other treatments. Additionally, this method could fill the treatment gap by providing a rapid antidepressant treatment that is about 60% effective, including people labeled as treatment resistant. For my study, I wanted to look at the antidepressant effects of sleep deprivation chronotherapy. I did this by looking at the various behaviors of rats in the four swim test. I was also interested in if this treatment would differentially affect male and female rats. I hypothesized that rodents who underwent sleep deprivation chronotherapy would show less depressive-like behavior in the four swim test than those who kept their normal sleep cycle. I also predicted that females in general would show more depressive-like behavior than males. This was based on previous rodent literature and existing human depression sex differences. 
I sleep deprived half of my rats for 24 hours via the flower pot method, which is a common method of sleep deprivation in rodent research. The base of this tub was filled with three inches of water, which the rodents typically tried to avoid. The rodents were able to traverse from pot to pot, but when they fell asleep on top of them, they would fall into the water and wake up. In order to measure the antidepressant effects of the treatment, I use the force swim test, which is also a common method in rodent research. This method models depression in humans by putting rodents in a stressful and inescapable situation, which causes behavioral despair. On the first day of testing, prior to sleep deprivation, the rodents would go through 15 minutes of swim, which induces learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is a depressive-like state in which the animal has given up trying to escape. 24 hours later, the rodents are put back in the force swim test for five minutes which is when the learned helplessness levels are measured via behavior. Immobility is a measure of depressive-like behavior in which the animal is inactive. Swimming and climbing are two active behaviors demonstrated in the force swim test. I have a short clip in which these three behaviors are shown all in the same rodent. The first is immobility, which is a passive floating. The second is climbing in which the animal takes on a vertical body posture and has its paws on the side of the tube. And the third is swimming, in which the animal is actively traversing the water's surface. In my results, I found that sleep deprivation chronotherapy for 24 hours had significant antidepressant effects shown as decreased immobility. This effect was only seen in the males, not the females. This supports my hypothesis that sleep deprivation chronotherapy has positive antidepressant effects, but it does not show the predicted sex difference. Instead of females being impacted, males were significantly impacted, the ones who were treated with sleep deprivation chronotherapy showing significantly reduced immobility levels. As I said, the females did not differ significantly. The males also differed significantly in climbing behavior. The experimental males this time showed significantly increased climbing behavior. The females, again, did not differ significantly. These figures show the trade-off between active and inactive behaviors in the force swim test. Swimming behavior was not affected. This is an interesting result because not only does it show the potential for sleep deprivation chronotherapy as an effective antidepressant treatment, but it may also hint at the gap in depression treatment methods. As I stated in my results, climbing behavior was significantly affected by the treatment, but swimming behavior was not. Climbing behavior has been linked to the noradrenergic system and swimming behavior has been linked to the serotonergic system. As climbing behavior was impacted, but swimming was not, sleep deprivation chronotherapy may act via the noradrenergic system. Since most common treatments act through the serotonergic system, those labeled treatment resistant may not actually be treatment resistant. They may just not be responsive to treatments that target serotonin. So they may have to take this other path on this figure that targets noradrenaline because the pathway that targets serotonin may not work for them. Sleep deprivation chronotherapy may provide an alternative treatment targeting a different system, potentially reducing the number of people labeled treatment resistant, as well as the suicides due to mistreated depression. So to wrap up, I want to talk about the major implications of my study. First off, it showed that at least for males, sleep deprivation chronotherapy did have antidepressant effects. This may suggest that it is a possible antidepressant treatment, specifically one that may target the noradrenergic system. This is promising because it provides an alternative treatment method 
that targets a different system than is normally targeted. Instead of targeting the serotonergic system, it may target the noradrenergic system. Additionally, having this alternative treatment method may help to reduce suicide rates and increase remission rates by providing a method that may help people who have been labeled as treatment resistant. For future research, it would be interesting to see some translational studies that compare the effects of sleep deprivation chronotherapy between rodents and humans. Additionally, because it showed a sex difference that I was not expecting, I feel like there should be more research on these sex differences of the effects of sleep deprivation chronotherapy. And that's the end of my presentation on my independent study. Feel free to contact me with any questions, and thank you all so much for coming and watching my presentation.